viewed from the perspective that slavery is a moral and economic evil, was the Three-Fifths Clause a good compromise? The Three-Fifths Clause was a demographic compromise reached between delegates from southern and northern states during the Constitutional Convention. It was designed to determine representation in Congress and taxation for federal purposes. The northern states did not want any of the slaves counted. The South wanted all of them counted. The compromise stipulated that only three-fifths of the slave population would be counted. It's essential to understand that this ratio was a political arrangement and not a statement or valuation of a slave's humanity or worth. Rather, it was a result of the contentious debate over how to factor enslaved people into population counts for representation. Arguments against the compromise. 1. Moral compromise. By counting three-fifths of the slave population for representation purposes, the Constitution implicitly recognized and institutionalized slavery. From a moral standpoint, this can be seen as dehumanizing, as it reduced a significant portion of the population based on their status as property. 2. Enhanced slave states' power. The compromise boosted the representation of slave states in the House of Representatives, granting them more power than they would have had if only free persons were counted. This gave slave states disproportionate influence in federal decision-making for decades, enabling them to protect and expand the institution of slavery. 3. Prolonged slavery. By granting the southern states increased representation, the compromise inadvertently strengthened their resolve to hold on to and expand the institution of slavery. This could be seen as indirectly extending the life of slavery in the U.S. Hey, let me hop in here for a minute. It's important to note that had no compromise been reached, the southern states may not have joined the Union. In this scenario, the southern states would have had no internal pressure or debate over slavery, and slavery may have continued indefinitely. Thanks for that reminder. Now let's look at the arguments in favor of compromise. Arguments in favor of the compromise. 1. Pragmatic necessity. At the time, the framers of the Constitution were deeply divided over the issue of slavery. Without some form of compromise, there was a genuine risk that the Southern states would not join the Union. In the eyes of some, the Three-Fifths Compromise was a necessary evil to ensure the formation and survival of the nascent United States. 2. Taxation. It's crucial to remember that representation came with the double-edged sword of taxation. By agreeing to the Three-Fifths Compromise, the southern states also took on a larger tax burden based on their whole number of free persons and three-fifths of all other persons. 3. Path to Abolition Some might argue that by keeping the Union intact at the Constitutional Convention, the Three-Fifths Compromise indirectly set the nation on a path to eventually confronting and abolishing slavery, culminating in the Civil War and the passage of the 13th Amendment. Conclusion The ethical merit of the Three-Fifths Compromise is deeply tied to one's perspective on the balance between moral imperatives and political pragmatism. While the Compromise undeniably bolstered the power of slaveholding states and embedded the institution of slavery into the Constitution, it was also seen by many framers as essential for preserving the fragile unity of the states. Whether it was a good compromise, ultimately depends on how one weighs immediate moral imperatives against long-term strategic goals. Given the premise that slavery is a profound moral and economic evil, the compromise can be viewed as a significant moral concession, even if it might have been a pragmatic political necessity at the time. 